Hey, it's Ashley, and today's video is going to be the summary of the Bible, so stick with me. All right, guys, when I look at this <clears throat> in a nutshell, I would say this book is about salvation. And when I say salvation, I mean that you are saved if you choose to be saved. Saved by what? Saved by who? You are saved from sin. You're saved from death. You're saved from bondage and brokenness and fear. And it's all by Jesus. So this is going to talk all about that. The Old Testament is setting the stage for Jesus for the most part. Okay. And then the New Testament is he is completely on the scene and we're going to see how salvation is really walked out as well. If you're newer to the whole aspect of salvation, please see some links below. I'll highly recommend to look at these if salvation is new for you because you really do want to be saved in Jesus. With that said, I'm going to go a little deeper with the overview of, of this. My goal today is to explain to you the Bible as if it was like the Atlantic Ocean, okay? I want to give you the whole mass overview of it. So the Atlantic Ocean, I'm going to go two inches deep. And then you can go deep sea diving in any part of the Bible as deep as you want now that you got that overview. We can get lost in the depthness and the details of overviews. And so again, my goal is just to give you a broad overview so you just even understand just the, the, the layout of the Bible. And then again, if you understand the mass overview, you can go deep sea diving even better. All right, so the Old Testament if you go to Google, you can just Google like books of the Bible and every website will lay out something like this. Okay. And I have my notes in here. Fun little fact, these little blue notes are all end times chapters. And so I will give you a resource for end time chapters in a little bit. So if you look at the Old Testament, the first section that we see will be um, the books of Moses, also known as the Torah. We'll see historic books. We'll see uh, poetic and wisdom books. And then at the end, we'll see major prophets and minor prophets. So what's going on here is with the Torah, with the first five books of Moses. This is going to be really hitting home on the birth of Israel. So in Genesis 12, I am going to read this. This will probably be the only scripture I read. In Genesis 12, it says, God is speaking to Abraham. He says, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land I will show you. This is going to be Israel. I will make you a great nation. This is Israel. I will bless you. I'll make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. It goes on, I will bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. What God is saying is even more than Abraham, since Abraham will be, um, his descendants are going to form the Israelites, which will then be Israel. God is saying, if you bless Israel, Israel will be, you will be blessed. If you curse Israel, you will be cursed. And because of Israel, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Why? Because Jesus is born from Israel. Israel is a Jewish man. So <clears throat> Genesis is going to hit home on that. And the Israelites, these are God's chosen people. These are the people of Israel. They are in Egypt, okay, because of a famine. And they are going to get out of Egypt and go into Israel eventually. But they don't get there right away. <clears throat> they don't get there right away because of unbelief. 
and disobedience. And so the first five books of the Bible are going to also talk on this as well. And it's going to talk about the law of Moses. It's going to talk about all these rules that the Israelites have to follow, which would include the Ten Commandments and the sacrificial system. So back in the day, they had to kill an animal um, be because of sin. And so you're going to see the, the law. You're going to see all these rules as well in, in, in the Torah, specifically like Leviticus and Numbers. Um, but don't, don't quote me on that. So that's going to be that first section of the Old Testament. Then we have the historic books. Now this is going to give you history of the Bible. So once the Israelites got into Israel, there were leaders known as judges, and then there were a few kings but then Israel as a whole split in two. So we have our northern section and our southern section. The northern is going to be known as Israel. And then the southern will be known as Judah. And then each of these sections will have their own sets of kings. Eventually, an empire named Assyria comes and wipes out the northern part. And then... Babylon, another empire, wipes out the southern part. And the Israelites are dispersed, meaning they're like no longer in Israel. They do eventually come back into Israel and they are going to restore the temple because the temple does get destroyed by that Babylon empire. So in a nutshell, that is what the historic books will be talking about. Now we've got our books of wisdom and poetry. These are really good. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth with these. I'll let you just kind of go run out in your Bible and just kind of page through and read through, but they really are wisdom and, and there is poetry, but also there's some prophecy with the book of Psalms. Okay. And I will now hit home on prophecy because that opens the door to, uh, these books that are called major prophets and these books that are called minor prophets. So when I say the word prophecy, or I say the word prophet, what I am talking about is there are going to be people that hear from God for a specific situation or a specific people group, or just even people as a whole, or even situations. And so that's what's happening with the Old Testament, with the major prophets and the minor prophets and some of the Psalms. When I say major prophets, it doesn't mean that they're more important. It just means that these books were longer. And if I say minor prophets, doesn't mean that they were less significant. They're just shorter books. But these are going to be books that are talking about the future to some degree. Now, we have to remember that these were written, again, don't quote me, but maybe 3,500 years ago. So, some of these prophetic words, some of these words that these men heard from God with a specific situation or person have come to pass because it's been 3,500 years. But there's going to be some prophetic words in the Old Testament that have not even happened yet. So we would call these like end time prophecies. So we got end time prophecies in the Old Testament, not, not just in the book of Revelation, which is in the New Testament. So what I would do personally is if I was going to jump into the Old Testament and read some of the prophetic books. So again, those would be like the Isaiah, Jeremiah, you know, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Jonah, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, all of these. I would ask myself, okay, who are they prophesying to? Has any of these come to pass? Are any of these end times related? And I'd also ask myself, is any of these men prophesying about Jesus? That's what I'd be asking myself as I'm reading through those books. And I'm going to give you some good resources to help you answer those questions. So <clears throat> there's a place or an organization called Bible Snap. I think that's what they call themselves. Or maybe that's just maybe like their YouTube channel name. But I will send their information below and you're going to see this document 
and they did a great great job this is just the old testament but they broke it down um they're talking about that um division that happens with israel and we got that you know the northern part and the southern part but then they're gonna put the books of the old testament where they best feel they go like with the timeline and so if you are going to like go look at one of those prophetic books in the old testament you could go look here like let's say you're like mm, i want to read about daniel I do love the book of Daniel. You could go on here and Daniel is up right there. So it's telling you this is around the time of the Babylon um, Empire ruling, which just gives you some good insight that this is where it fits into just the narrative of, of, of the Bible. So I'll give you that. Uh, so this, again, will help you just know potentially where some of these books are prophesying to. So example, like Isaiah is going to be prophesying partially to Judah, that, that southern um, split of Israel. But Isaiah is also end times related. How will you know it's end times? This right here is by Mike Bickle. Amazing, amazing teaching. So good. So good. So I'll put this PDF on the bottom. And uh, this article, this document is going to talk to you about all the different chapters that are end times related. So if you're, let's say, in one of the prophetic books of the Old Testament, just go in here and, and, and see if that book's in here. And then it's going to tell you what chapters. And so, for example, Daniel, I know this by heart because I teach the book of Daniel. So Daniel will be chapter two. Uh, some may debate that, but I would say chapter two. Um, and then it'll be chapter seven, eight, nine technically not 10 and then 11 and 12. Those will be end time related chapters, but this document will, will tell you that. And then I'll also put a document on the bottom about prophecies of Jesus that are in the Old Testament. So you could go ahead and look at that as well. That's really interesting. So in a nutshell, that's going to be your Old Testament. They're setting the stage for Jesus. I mean, even the law of Moses, like that sacrificial system, that is actually setting the stage for Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the perfect sacrifice, right? He is that perfect lamb. So we're going to see all these foreshadowings of Jesus in, in the Old Testament, which brings us to the New Testament. So the New Testament is going to be broken up into the Gospels and then um, one historic book and then all these books that are letters and then a prophetic book. So I'll break these apart and then I'll let you go. So the gospels, in a nutshell, these books are talking about Jesus' life and his ministry. They're gonna talk about the death and resurrection of Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful. It's so great because you have four authors, you have four different brains talking about Jesus' life. And so you think about it, this is what I'll, this is what I'll tell people. Let's say, um, pick three other people that you know of, that you're friends with or, or their family members. And so, and let's say you guys all like went to the mall. Well, you would explain the, the, the mall trip a little different than let's say your mom versus like your sister versus like your grandma, right? Let's say it was all four of you who went. You're all gonna have a similar story, but you're gonna have different perspectives because that's just how it is. And that's kind of how the Gospels are from my point of view. Then you have the historic book of Acts, which is so cool about this is, um, this is the last time we see Jesus before he ascends into heaven. And that's, that's what, what we see. We see uh, it's either an angel or angels and um, they are present as Jesus is ascending on a cloud and the angel or angels says, why do you marvel? Like he's coming back the same way he's leaving. Meaning like he's coming back on the clouds. I just find that fascinating. So Jesus in the flesh, you know, whoop, is in heaven. But obviously in spirit, he is with them. People are now gaining the Holy Spirit, which is beautiful. So the book of Acts is going to show the first people group like doing life, like with the Holy Spirit, building the church. 
We're going to see a key player named Paul come on the scene who was not a good guy, but becomes a Christian. And he's going to write a lot of these letters. And so these letters right here are either going to be written to people or written to a church. And it's pretty much going to tell you how to walk out salvation. Meaning once you have Jesus in your heart, you want to then walk out life with him and you want to know how to do that. So these letters are going to teach you on, on how to how to handle spiritual warfare, how to handle uh, just conflict when it rises. It's going to show you and tell you the identity you have in Jesus, the love that you have from Jesus. It's going to talk about spiritual gifts. I mean, it is just like you're a manual and <laughs> like how to be a Christian, how to walk out salvation. And then prophecy, the prophetic book of Revelation. The Bible ends with Revelation. Beautiful, beautiful book. Don't be intimidated. It is going to be definitely end times related. I would encourage you to read the book of Revelation. There's actually a blessing if you read the book of Revelation. I have some videos on Revelation if you want to check them out. If you would want me to do a new fresh take on the book of Revelation, just let me know in the comments and I would do that. All right, guys, there's the summary of the Bible in 16 minutes and 12 seconds.